how to use logic in your automation. We have a range of logic steps to choose from, from if conditions to if else conditions to um, try catch steps, and of course, a JavaScript step that allows you to create your own custom code to handle your logic. I'm Alex Barlow, co-founder of Axiom. Let's dive in. First up, the if condition step. This step basically executes a set of steps depending on whether a condition is true or false, which you can set yourself. So I'm gonna open up Axiom. In the step finder that's already open on screen, you can simply type in if, if a condition is true, run these steps, and I can click to add those steps. Now, I've already used this step in one of the axioms I've made, so I'm gonna talk you through that use. And it's in the send DMs template that I've got, or we've got on the website. And um, here you can see my if condition. What it does, if I just open up the page, if I just open up Instagram, I'll just talk you through what it does. And if I find a profile page, I'll just open up Axiom. What this step does is um, it works in tandem with a, a scrape step. So I have this scrape step that, if I just show you, is scraping the header of this profile page. And then I pass that value into my if condition to check for if some text in that header exists or if it doesn't. So it's what I'm using the if condition to do is check for the message button. If it's there, click on it. If it's not there, go on to the next run. So I've got my if condition. I've inserted the scrape data. Now you can, of course, pass data from webhooks, from CSVs, from all sorts of different sources, including Google Sheets. Now, what I do is plug in the scrape data. So I can basically check against the message. And then I set my condition to check. And here, separated by commas, I've got several different um, words I'm checking for. Basically, I'm checking for message in different languages to see if it's present. So I check against these words. You can also use numbers, values, and your own JavaScript, for example. But in this case, we're using words. You can match any word, because obviously we're not going to match all of these words, because I've got several words in there. Then below, once all those conditions are set up, I can here, decide whether I run the steps if the condition is true or I run them if they're false. So what I want to happen is these steps to run if the word message is found. So of course, if the word message is found, that condition is true, the steps below will execute it. And inside the if condition, I add the steps I want to execute if the condition is true. You'll need to, to add any steps in that if condition, you'll need to add using the add sub steps button and then selecting from the step finder. So that's how to use an if condition. There is another, there is another variation of the if condition which you might have seen in the step finder. It works in pretty much the same way, the if else condition. So once this step is added, you'll notice the first add sub step, that's the steps we want to be executed on the if. And then afterwards, if we want steps to be executed on the else, we can add sub steps below simply by opening the step finder. Now to set this step up, it's identical to the conditional if conditional step. It's just got the additional part of the else statement. And of course you need to check data, you need to Check against the data source. Again, scrape data, Google Sheets, CSVs, that can be webhook data, for example. Then your condition to check. Again, words, number values, or your own JavaScript condition. Any words, there's some match, matching, there's some rules for matching words, etc., and values that can be used. Once that condition to check has been set up, you then set up whether you want to reverse the condition or exercise if true, and that's a simple text box. Add in your sub steps to your if, then to your else, and that step will be set up. 
The next logic step we're going to look at is the continue if condition is met step. This step is really useful for example if you're scraping a monetary value of a product off a site and you wanted to execute if the value is less, let's say something's gone on sale, but you wanted to stop the run if it's still at the same value or higher. We can use a continue only if condition is met step to do that. We could also add such a step at the end of our run if we want to stop the run based on the condition. So let's say we've got a scrape step set up there, which I've got one, as step one. And step two is my continue only if condition is met step. Like the other logic steps, you need to pass some data into it so it can create its condition. It's got a value to check against. So that data can, of course, come from a scrape step. So you can extract it from a web page, or you could read it from a Google Sheet or, or pass a value from a webhook into this step. Once you've got your data to check against, in cases, in this case, a scrape, we can then set up our condition to check. So this is the value we're comparing against. We can use words, we can use numbers, we can even create our own JavaScript. We can pass in the variables and create our own logic in there with JavaScript. But let's say we're going to use numbers this time. We can enter a value. Now we could do greater than or equal, but I would want this condition to, to continue. I would want this basically what I want this to use as step four is to continue the run if the value is less, but stop the run if the value is more. So I'm going to choose less than or equal to a thousand. So if it's less than or equal to a thousand, I want the run to continue because I'd add some more steps to go and buy this um, imaginary item. Now, if the condition is not met, let's just gracefully fail the bot. And the run is ended. If the condition, then we need to look at whether to reverse the condition. So if the condition is not met, we want to continue. If the condition is met, we want to continue. So in this case, we don't want to tick that box at all because we only want to continue if the condition is met. And then to add steps to our execute after this, all I need to do is click the add step button and then I can start to build the rest of my bot out and for example, adding a click to click on a buy button or something like that. The try-catch step is our next step that features logic. Now this step is a really handy step for creating advanced automation. So I'm just going to add the step and talk you through it. We've got, I'm just going to search for try in Step Finder, click and add it. And basically this step gives you um, an option to add your steps to try and then the steps to execute after an error has been caught. So if there is no error, it will execute the steps following the outside of the try catch. So added with the add step, it will then let's say add a scrape data snippet there. So those steps here that I'm highlighting with a pointer would, would be executed if the try was successful. Otherwise, when it, if an error is caught, we'd execute the sub steps there. So um, this gives you quite a powerful logic step to play with. Because you can add your steps here, for example, to click buttons that may cause errors in certain certain circumstances, but not in others. And then you can add your steps to recover from that error, including different clicks. You could also add a jump step in there so you could jump to different steps. So that's a really handy step that contains logic for building more sophisticated automations in the browser. Now, another step we've got featuring some logic is the conditional or the conditional jump step. This step can be used to create a loop as well, and it also features on our loop page or it can be used to just jump skip steps to skip sections of the automation if a condition is met or isn't met. So 
let me open up Axiom. I'm going to search for the jump step. I'm just going to put conditional jump rather. But if I type in jump, I get the choice of both. I add the conditional jump. Now, as you've already seen the video, or if you skipped ahead, um, all these conditional steps are based on passing data into them. So it can check against that data and decide whether to execute what comes next. So once again, I'll pass in my scrape data here. And let's say, for example, I was checking for a button on a page. I wanted to click a message button. I could scrape the text from that button and then, or the surrounding area, I could then check against the condition for that word, leave the rule match onto any word. And if it finds that word, I could then execute my jump or I could execute my jump if it doesn't find that word. In this case, I'm gonna do it if it doesn't find that word. And so we're gonna reverse the logic because what we'd want to do is skip clicking the, the button if it's not there. This is a really handy bit of logic to use in that case. And we then jump down to the, the next step, which would, let's say, delete row. So I'd want to delete the row from the Google Sheet that couldn't be processed. So I jump down to step four, and that would execute if the condition isn't met. So if message is not found, but of course I can change that. If message is found, I can jump and skip and only click if it's not. But in this case, like I mentioned, I want to execute if the condition is not met. Now, worth mentioning maximum cycles here. You can see this controls the amount of times this jump step will perform a jump or a loop. Now, um, depending how long your your automation runs for, you may want to just delete the value and have it on blank, so it'll just loop indefinitely, but you can control the amount. So let's say you, you're sending, you're clicking on the button, message button like 100 times, if you only had the maximum cycle set to 20. Once those cycles or number of loops has um, exceeded, the, the bot will obviously stop jumping and then it'll just continue on running down and it would click the step it's trying to skip. So do keep that in mind. You may need a maximum amount of cycles. You may need to remove the value there to allow the bot to run and the logic to be preserved. Now, as Axiom evolves, we will be adding additional unconditional steps. If you have an idea, reach out to Axiom support and suggest it to us. But you do have the ability to use JavaScript in our custom JavaScript step where you can pass in tokens containing the data from other steps, you, and you can declare them as variables and start creating your own logic. It's pretty simple. Create the variable. And insert data, and then you can pass the scrape data straight into your variable and start to create the logic. Do remember though, if you Insert the variable like that, it's going to be a 2D array. If you want a string, do that. To find out more, we've got plenty of um, content in our doc site that will show you how, with some examples and show you how you can use JavaScript in combination with data to create even more fantastic logic.